The doctor tells us we should drink eight cups of it a day. Over 50% of our body weight is composed of it, and over 60% of the Earth's surface is covered by it. What am I talking about? Water, or as you may know it, H2O. That's two hydrogens and one oxygen. The internal structure of a water molecule, such as bond distances and bond angles, is well understood. However, the interactions between water molecules are much more difficult to characterize. We all know that opposites attract, and water molecules are no different. When two water molecules get close enough to each other, the positively charged hydrogen of one water becomes attracted to the negatively charged oxygen of the other water. This is what's known as a hydrogen bond. But how strong are these hydrogen bonds? Are they really that important? Consider a lake in the winter. As the temperature outside drops, the liquid water in the lake turns to solid ice. And from experience, we know that we know that, that ice floats on top of the water. However, Water is the only compound that we know of that behaves this way. With every other compound, as it becomes a solid, it actually becomes more dense and would sink. If water were to behave like this, the entire lake would freeze from the bottom up. Clearly, this is not a good situation for the many forms of life present in our lakes during the winter. And this is just one example to show how these hydrogen bonds cause water to behave different than what we would normally expect. My research is on describing these water interactions, and specifically, I will be looking at a pair of water molecules known as a water dimer. To study this system, I will use a computational technique known as molecular dynamics. Now, this won't be the first time that molecular dynamics has been used to study water, and recent work has shown that to get accurate results, we need to include quantum effects in our calculations. These quantum effects are essentially deviations from our much simpler classical calculations that become important when the temperature of our system is low and when the mass of our atoms is light, such as the hydrogens. I have shown some of my results here showing the interaction energy or the energy between the two water molecules as a function of temperature. And I have plotted two curves, one with and one without quantum effects. Clearly in the high temperature limit, you can see that not including quantum effects isn't that big of a deal. The curves are still fairly close. However, as the temperature drops and the quantum effects become more important, you can see that at about minus 250 degrees Celsius, we overestimate the strength of the interaction by about 40% by not including these quantum effects. My future work will be in extending this methodology to larger water clusters to study more of this hydrogen bonding phenomenon. Thank you for your time.